All right, lesson two. Lesson two deals with representing functions using series. And this is when the unit just gets a wee little bit bizarre. This is the eighth unit of AP Calculus BC at Canandaigua Academy. It is a joy to go through it, but it's going to be a month. It's a month. So it's a quick, quick lesson, but it is tricky. Oh, I don't need that. Oh, I've got to skip ahead. Okay. So, note the following. If the absolute value of x is less than 1, then 1 plus x plus x squared plus and so on plus x to the n and so on. Well, if the absolute value of x is less than 1, then this thing is a geometric series. And since this thing is a geometric series, it converges for absolute value of x less than 1. And what is that sum? It is 1 over 1 minus the ratio. 1 over 1 minus the ratio. Thus, we can say that on the interval from negative 1 to 1, 1 plus x plus x squared plus and so on, represents... 1 over 1 minus x. What does that mean? Well, permit me to bring up a calculator for you. What does that mean? It means that on that interval, if I don't know what 1 over 1 minus x looks like, if I don't know what 1 over 1 minus x looks like, I could just take a look at 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth uh, on negative 1 to 1, not 4, 1. Uh, maybe the y values I could bring in a bit. Look at that. They look fairly close. In fact, they look very close, close to x equals 0. If I were to add more terms, I'd get something even closer still. And we could do a trace. If you get over to about 0.5, there's not much difference between those two functions. You go a little further out, there's a little bit more difference between those two functions. But very close to zero... There is very little difference between those two functions. That's what we mean by the one fu the the infinitely long polynomial represents a particular function. So, we call infinite polynomials of that form power series. A power series a power series is of the form sum n goes from 0 to infinity, sum constant times x to the n. You get a constant, you get another constant times x to the first, you get another constant times x to the second, the nth term is a constant times x to the n, and so on. We say that this series is centered at x equals 0. More generally, the power series sum constant times x minus a to the n, that's a number plus a number times x minus a, plus a number times x minus a squared, and so on, is centered at x equals a. 
So in the case where we graphed the thing, the center of the power series is at zero. And look at that. The functions are exactly the same at x equals zero. If I were to center a power series at some other number, then, well, we're in, we're in that situation. If we were centered at some other number, I'd look at that other number and say, look how well the power series represents the function at that point. Blow it up. Excellent. Excellent. Thing to think about. Okay. The beautiful thing here is that we can use that. We can use that to our advantage. I told you, geometric series were going to be our best friend forever. I want a power series that represents 1 over 1 minus x squared. And the only thing in our toolbox, the only thing in our toolbox is this. And so I have to ask myself, what is the connection between this function and this function? You're thinking, oh, just square it. But I'm thinking, take a derivative. If you take the derivative of 1 minus x to the negative 1 power, you end up with negative 1 times 1 minus x to the negative 2 times negative 1. Oh, man. So if the derivative of the oh hello if the derivative of this function is that function then to get 1 over 1 minus x squared to get a power series that represents it I just take the derivative of this long polynomial term by term. Derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of x is 1. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, and so on. Derivative of x to the n is nx to the n minus 1, and so on. What does that mean? That means that if I want a look at that function, I can graph 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed plus 5x to the fourth and get a function that agrees with it by and large around x equals 0. And, and you're looking at that left side going, no, 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 that doesn't come close. Yeah, well, we only have five terms. There's plenty more terms to bring in. You just have to let me do that. That does a better job. And the more terms we bring in, the closer we come to approximating the actual retail price. Um, side note here. Uh, this convergence only happens between negative 1 and 1 because the original convergence only happened on negative 1 to 1. And since the original convergence only happens on negative 1 to 1, the derivatives will only converge on negative 1 to 1. I'll go one more. represents ln of 1 plus x by a power series. This is going to blow the minds of all the people watching. I'm telling you that. It's going to blow your mind. So I got a clone. I got a clone. I'm going to clone the green thing. This is going to blow the mind of absolutely everybody watching. No. Oh, not there. No. Ah, there. There. That's the only tool in our toolbox. And we know that because of geometric series. And you're going, geometric series? I used to like geometric series. So I've got to ask the question, what is the connection between that function there 
and that function there and you're thinking I don't know I don't know it would be really nice if I could have a 1 over 1 plus X down there and the way to get a 1 plus X down there is to say that that is 1 minus negative X 1 minus negative X would be 1 plus negative X plus negative X squared plus negative X cubed plus and so on plus negative X to the N and so on. Well now now let's let's get rid of this question and ask a completely different question. What is the connection between this function? and that function. And since you're in a calculus class, that's a little bit more obvious. Oh, coach, you can't do this to us. You can't do this to us. If to get from the one to the other requires an integration, then we're just going to take this big, infinitely long polynomial, and we're going to integrate it term by term. We're going to get x minus 1 half x squared plus 1 third x cubed plus dot 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 and so on so that the nth term is x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. But of course there's a negative 1 to the n involved there and so on. So what ends up happening? This is going to blow your mind every time. If I'm looking for the ln of 1 plus x and I don't know what that looks like, I can use this hideously disgusting polyn polynomial minus x to the fourth over 4 plus x to the fifth, I have a master's degree, minus x to the sixth over six, and on that son of a gun, son of a gun, those two functions are not that far apart not that far apart. And so what we spend the next three weeks doing is taking things that are not polynomials. Not a polynomial. Not a polynomial. We spend the next three weeks taking things that are not polynomials and saying, yeah, it's a polynomial. Yeah, it is. That's a polynomial. It's just an infinitely long polynomial. And you're going to go, oh, man, and it's going to be amazing. And we're going to do it well, and that's all I have to say. We'll see you tomorrow.